Mm. Hello. Hey, Eddie. How are you today? I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Um, how has your, uh, you know, New Year been with in terms of the things that you are learning? Mm, my New Year. Mm -hmm. mm, I'm these days learning with C. Like I, I make CEOs as my role model. Mm -hmm. And um, they're quite inspiring because, like, overall they have a similar st similar story. Like one thing they have in similar is like they code when they were young mm -hmm. and they read when they were young. So these mm -hmm. are the two things. Yeah, this is some one common pattern that I see in most of the successful people. Mm -hmm. They had this amazing habit of reading. Second, most of the people who have become entrepreneurs. especially in uh, you know the fields of tech especially you see that they were introduced to programming they were introduced to um, computers quite early in their lives isn't it mm -hmm. and uh, like you i like to you know deeply go and understand what they were doing differently in their early years remember we did uh, this exercise where we used to read a little bit of their early lives we stopped but we should continue doing that right we used to read about what they were doing in their early lives and we read about elon musk how he used to stay home a lot and uh, he used to read a lot he used to just uh, keep uh, you know learning one book after the other which is really interesting right at a very young age to do that and uh, that is one skill that i think is very important because reading even have you heard of uh, novel ravikant uh, yeah he is uh, like he gives advices on business right business entrepreneurship solopreneurship building your own work your own companies and um, he was also raised in a you know a place where he wouldn't go out much but he would go to library and finish one book after the other he was not in a great neighborhood but he just kept reading and like uh, crazy for reading yeah because he didn't have any other interesting thing to do right so uh, i'll share uh, my screen with you okay and can you just give me that permission to share and i'll yeah tell you about the founder of stripe Mm. Patrick Collision. Yeah, so I will have to search. Where is it? Where is my? I found this. So P Patrick Collision has written these. Um, he writes these amazing things for young people in his blog, and I really liked it. And he says that you know, ten to twenty years. you know that gap period are like prime years do you agree with that statement mm, yeah actually 10 to 20 years can be prime years because mm. when you're 10 years old your brain is quite not mm. very much but your brain is developed enough that you can like you, like you can build enough sense mm -hmm. to um you know have a business mm -hmm. so then you can start a business and if you're actually starting it from 10 and you're like literally um you know pulling it till 20 and it's a, like it's getting famous actually uh, by then if you're going to sell the business and it's mm -hmm. a very good business and then you'll say to your customer that I've worked on this for 10 years your eventually you will get a lot of so i've also saw uh, i also saw these guys what they do is you know they they build businesses they sell they build businesses they sell until they have enough money to pursue their passion mm. and then yeah so if you if you have a thing in mind but it's too expensive for you you can start a business and if it's a very very expensive dream you have mm -hmm. you can like uh, you can keep it from your prime years so mm -hmm. 10 to 20 years and by then your business will be i'm sure it will be mm -hmm. very uh, a very famous business and then when you sell it you're going to get a lot of money and if you're getting enough money to pursue your passion it's good and then from your passion you can build a business and then you can take the business anywhere you want
Absolutely. And not only, uh, of course, people will get money when they create something very interesting. But what I see when you are, you know, coding or when you are uh, creating something, I see that there are a lot of things happening, right? Like you are, uh, first you are looking for these tutorials, right? First you get an idea that I want to build this. And then you get an idea. Then you start looking for how to learn, right? You sometimes reach to some people, sometimes you reach to out to uh, sometimes when I don't have any choice, I ask ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. And before, what I used to do, I just used to press copy paste, and then that was not the process of the journey. And now I'm making a focus app. I saw mm -hmm. no one has posted anything like a focus app for Flutter. So I told ChatGPT, mm -hmm. like, I'm giving. Uh, can you please give me some uh, ten ideas? Okay, we're not getting into AI, but then it give me a focus, uh, like focus app AI code, mm -hmm. and then yeah, it's still in progress. So yeah, so that's amazing. How you are finding ways to solve your own problem, right? And then you are going and finding ways. I think this is one brilliant skill, right? To have in a very young age because. Uh, nobody teaches you this. You can only learn yourself. And that is why I always quote Peter Gray when he says that free learning is very important. He also gives example of free learning. He also gives example of hunter gatherers, right? When hunter gatherers were, you know, they were um, learning from their environment, right? They used to go out hunting with their parents because parents had these skills right because they they had no other thing to do right they had to hunt they had to gather and they had to cook and eat and survival and they were learning from their people around from older or i think this we stopped uh, when the school system started because what happens now that you are not learning from your parent you are just detached from your parent at a very early age and the earlier it is getting detached children are getting attached the better parents think it is because I think my child will learn skills faster. But that detachment early can also break that kind of emotional aspect of kids, which is just developing. And um, so these are also skills, you know, emotional skills. How do you... Yeah, actually, emotional mm -hmm. skills is a big part. Mm -hmm. Like, because uh, there's also a thing called EQ, like there's one called emotional uh, quotient. Yeah, IQ mm -hmm. and what is the full form of IQ? Intelligence sorry? quotient. Yeah. So, like, even if you're very intelligent, you have to also be very emotional intelligent. So that way you balance your intelligence. Mm -hmm. So if you're not uh, like intelligent in your emotions at all, mm -hmm. and you're very intelligent, that's not balancing. If you are very good in your hard skills, but you're not good in your soft skills, hard skills are like the physical things. Like, I'm a good coder, but how kind you are matters more. So, more people will work with me and all those stuff. Hmm. And these are the skills slowly, I think, uh, we stopped, uh, you know. Now we are trying to artificially uh, create these things in schools by telling that, hey, we are teaching SEL, social emotional skills also. So, we have a classroom. So, for everything, they add one thing. They add another bill for parents and then they add <laughs> another... Yeah, they, uh, as, like as school as you were saying school says that you know they're uh, like they'll teach uh, kids how to mingle but in the uh, in the classrooms like most classrooms mm -hmm. there will be mostly posters uh, written <laughs> keep quiet and then you'll have a uh, 45 to one hour minute uh, one hour recess and then uh, like kids do not mostly talk the play and then we are going home. So then, uh, you know, that the only uh, way left to communicate is from mobile phones or having play dates, you know, something like that. Everything artificial. See, even learning, if you see, right, it's very, very, uh, you know, one way learning, isn't it? Like you learn one thing after the other. Uh, you learn about plants now, then you learn about animals, then you learn about animal kingdom. Like, it's it's all stacked. But in real life... Like learning... how a syllabus is stacked. Like huh. English, huh. you have to do this, this much for the exam, mm -hmm. Hindi, math. Science. And then children don't learn the skills that would be more relevant in real life. See, when I came out of school, I was like, where am I? I didn't like the real world. I loved 
the school environment it was so you were in a hostel right so yeah. then it was it, all a closed community and mm, then you know you would rarely see know. the rooms. i didn't know how competitive exam works i didn't know what i would need to pursue that i just uh, was like waiting for uh, you know this will happen so i will do it so it just went one after the other i just kept pursuing them without even knowing and that is not with you 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 can have these arguments you can have these questions you can and the way when we say that children learn to code we should not take in a way that you know even parents even make this very uh, uh, painful for our kids i have seen children copying codes right oh yeah oh my god they, they, they on are, the notebook they, literally yeah. so they are copying codes now if school is doing this children are not going to learn anything why are we copying codes <laughs> is that even learning see if you have to learn coding it has to become... e- even if you're coding it on your computer unless you're uh, like at least you're running it but if you're just copying it on a notebook you're mm-hmm. not getting any console output but when you learn to code i see that the kind of skills that you build right you i have seen you getting frustrated right you're not getting answers you get got angry and then you start working on it sometimes you leave and this is real life this is how things work sometimes your project works sometimes you don't get you don't it doesn't work you get help from people you learn online so these are the skills learning relearning unlearning upskilling uh sometimes dropping it for some time and remember you told me that sometimes your code doesn't work and then when you come back later it starts working yes right sometimes. even those things can happen and this is one pattern that we have seen in many or sometimes like uh, when you get frustrated mm. what happens is your mind like drops down at that task mm. and uh, like if i come back and then mm. i just see that's an easy fix i just need mm. to add a opening and closing bracket that would be like what <laughs> so here are the things that i was saying P- patrick collision sh- mm-hmm. shares and uh, so he says i'm going to just read a couple of things he says go deep on things become an expert so you know uh, for example like you how you go deep into flutter programming and how you learn about it and uh, then he says aim to read a lot if you think something is important but people older than you don't hold it in high regard there's a reasonable chance that you're right and they are wrong so uh, you know that's another message that he gives he also says make things um, and you make a lot of things right and uh, uncertainty and not having the right answer not having the perfect result is completely fine right in schools we are always judged by not being able to create something perfectly fine he says it's fine to be uncertain right um he also says figure out a way to ra- travel to san francisco and meet other people who have moved there to pursue so you will see this pattern in many people like patrick collision or elon musk or steve jobs they all moved to places where there were more opportunities and they say it's really really important like if i if i would mm-hmm. like i would go to china because in china you get a lot of diy parts <laughs> like mostly to make <laughs> computers and then you know it will be fun Uh, he says people who did great things often did as so at very surprisingly young ages they were a uh, gray head when they became famous not even not when they did the work he says so it may, it might take time till you become famous but it's always best to start early right and uh, so here i was we were reading about um, elon musk remember yeah. and uh, i will just try to take you there i'm unable to switch to this so um uh, once was you know he when he was 12 he created a video game and sold it to a computer magazine and uh, he moved to the us and then you know you know he started a uh, lot of companies there and uh, in 95 he founded zip to a company that provided maps and business directories to online newspapers so they you if you see this pattern a lot of them uh, started very early you know building things building mm. and failing is fine right but at least the idea is to start building and this is what another gap that you see that you don't get this kind of experience in school because it's very artificially created you keep you, you remember i sh- shared one picture with you 
learn 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 and then you achieve and otherwise in a pra- in a practical way it's learn, it's like uh, stairs ha, you know? learn try fail try learn so it shouldn't be just one way right we also we were also discussing about sam altman and how he uh you know in his early days even he had a computer with him in a very young age mm. at the age of 8 uh, uh, his first computer an apple wow. macintosh and began to learn how to code and take apart computer hardware he attended john burrows uh, private school in lorde in missouri in two, 2005 after 2 years uh, at stanford he was studying study. computer he dropped out without earning a bachelor and this is another pattern many of yeah, them yeah. drop out even elon musk <laughs> dropped out steve Sam jobs Martin dropped out steve jobs yeah yeah we'll get i at least we'll get mm-hmm. five people famous people that mm-hmm. have dropped out um bill gates dropped out okay at the age of 19 altman co-founded loop the location based social network see again similar pattern with elon musk he also founded a company like that which was about finding something right oh my 30 million dollars in venture capital for the company uh, he was able to raise wow amazing actually that's mm-hmm. what i was saying so you can start a business mm-hmm. even you're earning from the business plus when you're selling the business you're getting money mm-hmm. and that's how you can literally get double profit when you want to pursue your interests mm-hmm. and like if i want to start a car company but mm-hmm. you need a lot of investments first you need to have some dealerships mm-hmm. you need to uh, make your own car parts mm-hmm. you need to have something unique about the car so uh, something mm-hmm. unique about the products so people come Mm. and that is very expensive mm. so like i just did a business about anything mm. like what if i just did a business about printing and t-shirts like shopify and like if i would have a biz- uh, business like shopify shopify would me like so much worth of money i would just sell it and boom hmm you can keep doing like that until in your prime years until you get your dreams uh, and all those stuff mm. <clears throat> very amazing i mean i find this quite quite uh, like i didn't i was never able to think like this in my early years so i think it's very important that children can think in various aspects right uh, creativity right i mean you used to create a lot of things remember you used to create these gems dispenser and mm. uh, steering wheel and all that and how you were able to think right and um, yeah like actually you need a lot of time to do that mm-hmm. because whenever you're working like you get mm-hmm. some idea and then then i'll have to literally write that down otherwise i'll forget about it because it's all a playable thing of mechanics mm-hmm. and with one uh, when you were able to crack open uh, how this thing works i remember you were able to understand how different things work right you were able to understand and even now you are able to think of how different mechanics work so it basically opens up your mind and you start thinking through things like just a small uh, example before we wrap up mm-hmm. like a piston goes up and down mm-hmm. but how does it transfer to the wheels of a car so it starts the wheels start moving the piston makes the wheels start moving but the pistons are like this you know mm-hmm. is it horizontal yeah horizontal hmm. do you have an image to show that what you are explaining yeah i'll sh- show it real quick just a second so what happens is uh, by the meantime i'll explain it to you there is a uh, uh, one thing called a uh, you know it's called a crank shaft which just takes uh, you know up and down like a thing moving up and down to you know rolling it like this hmm. and that's how a car moves on certain yeah so here is my screen i'll share my screen and yeah so this is a uh, yeah can you see hmm. so this is a piston so hmm. it goes like up and down and up and down it goes like this hmm. and then it makes some come like it makes some it bursts and it makes some uh, hmm. you know i forgot it's what you would say yeah combustion pressure hmm. and then forward it to the crank 
crankshaft through connecting rod, which can also uh, converts uh, the energy released and mm -hmm. all this stuff. Why did you give this example? Because I was just thinking about mechanics. Mm, how mechanics work and how it makes you think. Yeah, Maybe. this is just like a basic example mm -hmm. of mechanics. Yeah, so like what and I was like thinking. a small thing, like how, you know, in cycles, chains move and then mm -hmm. that's how pedal to wheels. Mm -hmm. So we had written this uh, blog earlier, you know, where we spoke about uh, early lives of successful individuals, right? And if you see again, a lot of them had uh, adversity in their life, you know, problems that they face. And through those problems, they built resilience. Like uh, Albert Einstein, you know, he was very independent and rebellious in, when, in his classroom, mm -hmm. right? He would just ask questions and he didn't find that structure of uh, learning in school. Uh, he didn't like that, right? And, uh, but his passion uh, was... Uh, it didn't come out it didn't go down okay and only because he was able to think a lot and he was he had more time to him, himself he was able to come with various theories and uh, he had this unconventional thinking style even steve jobs he had uh, he struggled in his early years he was bullied in the school he was not very enthusiastic in traditional school um he remember that story where he calls um uh, to this uh, uh, Hewlett Packard um, office, and he asked for parts. Yeah, for a uh, radio. I don't remember. Frequency calculator. Ah, or frequency something. counter. Counter. Yeah, he calls, and then they. Even they, I tried to make it. I call Apple this time. <laughs> and they uh, and they gave called him for a summer internship. Right. And uh, Richard Branson also has the story where, you know, he was struggling with dyslexia and he was suffering. And then... Um, yeah, and I also like like how he was working for businesses, like how I was, I'm saying, like every time, mm. you know, you just keep pursuing your passion with businesses. Mm. And then, you know, he flew to space with his own Virgin group. And that was mm. really awesome. Yeah, and then he, you know, he realized that what they were learning in school is very not mm. relevant in the sense that they don't learn about what's happening in the world. And that's how he started a school magazine and it uh, took off very well. Edison, we have also learned about Edison and uh, how he was very curious. And It's uh, a nice mix of everyone here. Uh, he is, uh, uh, you know, he faced some academic challenges and the school said they cannot... Uh, they wrote a letter to his mother and his mother didn't read that letter uh, so she uh, to him but she took on her to homeschool him and uh, and you know edison how brilliantly he discovered amazing things he right? like discovered the light bulb like exactly and it's and, like uh, so you know used around the world it's like mm -hmm. you know. uh so you know look at that this this is so cool and uh, parents can of obviously play a great role. Like in case of Bill Gates, uh, his mother had played a huge role and, um, you know, providing him what, with what he needed in his early life, connecting him with people. Even Bill Gates was uh, discovering a lot of things quite early in his school. He was, you know, he found a way to um, get, uh, you know, crack code and get the wi-fi or whatever free in school something like that we read um so yeah those things and so when you said in the beginning that uh, you know we should have these role models where we can learn from them where we can know their stories of how they built big companies and i think this is what i call early skills this is what i call the importance of you know building skills early mm -hmm. and uh, when you have the skills early it's just that you are more aware. That's one thing for sure. Uh, another thing is that, you know, World Economic Forum says that you should have a couple of skills in this world to survive and do better. Mm -hmm. It's like critical thinking. Mm -hmm. You have um, problem solving skills, creativity, teamwork, collaboration. And, it, and if you have these skills, trust me, you are on a great path, at least for yourself right what do you think of it yeah that's what i think actually um so yeah 
All right. So it was great talking to you, Adi. And uh, great work building things that you build. And we will leave some of the links of your uh, current Project. projects so that people that. can have a look. So thank you for joining us. And uh, if you have any question or anything, you can just write down in the comments. And we'll, and we'll try to reply. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.